Welcome students. Today, we are going to do a lesson on finding the determinant of a two by two matrix. Now, I wanna get straight into the way some textbooks may have a two by two matrix represented. Very commonly, um, internationally basically, you guys may see that uh, a two by two matrix is represented using letters A, B, C and D. And these letters typically all represent our uh, numbers or constants. Um, they can be fractions, they can be negative numbers. You all get the point. Now, some advanced textbooks may have those very same letters, A, B, C and D, being replaced by notations that look like these on the right hand side of the screen. For example, A11 or shall we uh, say a sub 11, a sub 12, a sub 21, a sub 22. Now, how exactly did they arrive at those arbitrary letters? I mean, A, B, C, and D, yeah, they picked them from the alphabet. It's clearly what they did. It's clear what they did, sorry. But um, with A sub 11, 12, they seem very specific. So how did they get those values? And what's the difference between using either? Well, first of all, let's get into how they actually arrived at these A sub 11s and A sub 12s. If you take note, this first uh, row here, this is called row one. And this first column here, this is called column one. Now, because that first uh, space or that first location here uh, belongs to a row one and column one, that's one one. Hence the reason why they gave that letter the notation a sub one one or a 11. Also, if we were to identify that second position where you are seeing a sub one two or a sub 12, that belongs to row one and column two. Do you see it now? Yeah. So pretty much they're using that subcomponent based on the row by the column that that uh, letter is positioned or located in. Remember when you're ordering matrices or naming them, you always start with which row it belongs to by its column. Um, let's do one last one. For example, the third one here, this belongs to the second row and it belongs to the first column. So hence, it's called A sub 2, 1. Row 2, column 1. Ah, uh, So now you guys understand when you see these in textbooks, now you understand how they arrived at naming them. Now, second point. What's the difference? Well, the difference is that with letters, all letters are used to represent some type of number. And letters are just arbitrary. So once you understand the purpose of a letter, then its intent is all you really need to be concerned about. Which kind of moves us forward into the formula I have written at the bottom of the screen over here. Now I will highlight it. And there's a reason I wrote the formula out in which a lot of you guys who are just reviewing this as a let lesson and have never seen um, this before might be quite surprised, but I'll explain. Now you see the determinant of a two by two matrix has a special notation. It's usually written within uh, these kind of parentheses, <laughs> tight tongue parentheses here or the DET of A, also noted by the determinant of A for short. So when they're asking you to find the determinant of a two by two matrix frequently, you will see these notations. Now let's get into the formula here. Exactly what is this formula trying to tell us? Now it's saying that to find the determinant of a two by two matrix, it's given by the product of the leading diagonal subtract the product of the other diagonal. Now let's apply those words to the first matrix we're seeing on the left hand on the left hand side of the screen here. Now using those words, then that must mean 
that the determinant of a matrix is the product, products means to multiply, product of the leading diagonal. What's the diagonal again? Well, it goes like this. So the product of that diagonal should give me A multiplied by D, subtract the product of the other diagonal, which should give me B multiplied by C. This is the other diagonal. Now, I know a lot of you guys might be scared. You might be thinking, how do we know to multiply A by D and not D by A? Well, if you do remember, multiplication is commutative. So if you multiply three by four, it's the same as four by three, even if those values contain negative numbers. So because multiplication is commutative, if you accidentally wrote down something like this, DA minus uh, CD, or any combinations of those, the answers are all going to be the same, essentially, because multiplication is commutative. Uh, so let's apply this formula to that second matrix we have here. So on the right hand side, we have the matrix also A. Same matrix is just represented by different arbitrary values there. And once again, we'll go in with that formula. The formula says product of the leading diagonal. That's the first one. Now the first diagonal starts from here, goes this way. So we're going to multiply A11 by A sub 2, 2, and we're going to take away the product of the other diagonal, which will give us A sub 12 multiplied by A sub 21. And pretty much that's it. Now, let's see what happens if I were to give you guys a question that contained numbers. So let's get into it. Here's an example with real numbers, right? So for example, if you were given, oh, I don't know, let's just say, let's scroll up the screen a bit actually to where we can see that formula. And I am also going to erase this one here because we're not so much interested in that. Okay, all right, we're good to go guys. Now I'm gonna give you a nice, simple, easy one. Given a matrix uh, A, let's call it A, and it's negative two, one, three, uh, five. Let's go with that. Okay, so we have a matrix here, and do you realize that this matrix has no arbitrary letters? They're just values, which is the reason why I gave the formula in words. You see, when you exactly don't have a formula formula to memorize, if you understand what you're doing, it's rather easy. Now, if this question is asking us to find the determinant of this two by two matrix, then we can apply the worded formula that just simply says that is given by the product of the leading matrix of the <laughs> of the leading diagonal, sorry. Wow, my bad. All right, guys. That's why you do not drink coffee before recording a lesson. And then you subtract the product of the other diagonal. One by three. And where are we going with this, guys? Oh, yeah, we have a calculation to do. And our answer turns out to be negative 13. If you're really skilled with your calculator, you know, type in those brackets, man. Type them in. Make sure to close your brackets because you'll get the wrong answer. Point to note. All right, guys. So this is why I gave you the wooded definition for you guys to understand. Because I know some students, they would replace this by saying, well, this matrix is given any form A, B, C, D. So therefore, um, since our matrix is negative two, one, three, five, it must mean that A has a value of negative two, B has a value of one, C has a value of three, and D has a value of five. And then they would go ahead and use this formula, A, D minus B, C, or if they were uh, subbing those values as A11, A22, et cetera, they would have used this formula. But if you understand the wording, I'd suggest just applying that because it's much easier, much quicker, much simpler. All right, guys, so I'll do one more example. 
All right, and I'll show you guys something really cool. Yeah, we can get cool with matrices, guys. Okay, so let's look at a second example here. What if you were given a matrix B having values of 5, 2, X, R, and 3? And then they ask us to find uh, the determinant of this matrix B. How are you going to do that? Well, same process applies. You start up your answer. Determinant of B will simply be equal to the product of the leading diagonal. So that's 5 by 3. Subtract the product of the other diagonal. That's 2. And there is an X there. So what? Don't be scared of letters, guys. They're just letters. They represent some random value. All right, let's multiply them. 5 by 3 is 15. And 2 multiplied by X gives us 2X. And that's our answer. We have no like terms here. 15 is a constant and 2X is an algebraic uh, term in X. So we cannot group them together. This is as simplified as our answer can be. And that's our final answer. So there will be cases where some of those values are represented by arbitrary letters and uh, you have to still be able to work out that determinant. So it's very important to understand exactly what you are multiplying by and not so much the formula, understand the words, understand the application. All right, guys. Um, now I can do a tutorial on this if you guys like, leave a comment down below and if you uh, I get enough persons requesting it, I will do a full tutorial on this. Now, before I end this session, I just want to show you guys something special about uh, the determinant of a two by two matrix. It's very nice. And that is when we have something called a singular. Singular matrix. All right, now I'll just leave a tit-tat of a point. Um, a matrix whose determinant um, uh, we can call it A is equal to zero is said to be singular. All right, so that's just a little definition that you guys might need to know. And take note that this applies for matrices of the form N by N. Okay, so a 2 by 3, sorry, a 2 by 3 is not of the form N by N. All right, so um, if I were to have a, um, if I were to have, Choosing a pretty color here, get some purple. If I were to have a two by three, n by n suggests that the values have to be the same, right? So this is not an n by n matrix. This is like an n by m or a by b. An n by n matrix would be one where we have values such as two by two or three by three, etc. Okay, guys, so please take note of that, that singular matrices are said to have determinants equal to zero, but it, this only applies pretty much for square matrices. Okay, guys, and let's see an application of this. Um, for example, they can give us a question like this. Um, let me use my pretty color here. Find the value of A for which uh, the matrix uh, A is singular. Okay, so they're telling us that the matrix is singular. So once you state that a matrix is singular, guys, it simply means that our uh, determinant is zero. 
So you can start up your answer by saying if matrix is singular, comma, then the determinant of A is equal to zero. And of course, you need to have the matrix, <laughs> which I didn't give you guys. So let's just say we were given um, a matrix. Uh, by the way, I'm using A a lot, but matrices can be lettered any any letter you want. It can be A to Z. You know, I'm just using A. All right. So if we're given this matrix and they're telling us that the uh, matrix is singular, it means that its determinant is zero. But besides its determinant being zero, we also know how to calculate the determinant of a matrix. It's the product of the leading diagonal, A times 3 is 3A, subtract the product of the other diagonal, 3 times 2 is 6. So we have two bits of information which we can actually piece together and create a nice, simple equation that's solvable. So we have on one hand, we have that the determinant of our matrix A is equal to 3A, minus six, and we also have that point to note that they said the matrix is singular, which means that its determinant is also zero. So we can equate this to zero because we know that whatever value A has to be, it has to be one such that this works out to be equal to zero. So we created a nice easy equation and we're gonna solve. Okay guys, I have a lot of students to reach here and tend to be lost. And it's because you guys need to practice a bit of your algebra skills. From here, go down has nothing really essentially to do with matrices. From here below just has everything to do with your skills at being able to transpose. All right, so we're going to uh, add 6 and subtract 6 to both sides. We'll get 6 on that. And then finally, we're going to divide both sides by 3. And you'll end up getting A to have a value of 2. So this is very, very popular in CSEC exams. I think I'll do another one. Okay, guys, I think I am actually going to do another one. Just so you actually grasp the full aspect of it. Okay, so another example. Open screen. Um, what if they give you, Gavin, um, I don't know, uh, I'm thinking up a question here. I'll use a different letter. Given B is equal to, uh, uh, I'm actually looking for a question, but that's fine. I'll make up one. Um, given B is equal to X on negative two, um, one and three. One, if we're gonna get a fraction here. <laughs> I just made up these values, guys. Okay, so given that we have a two by two matrix here, um and b is singular okay they're gonna ask us to find x find x okay so we know two things we know how to find the determinant of a matrix it's simply the product of the leading diagonal that's 3x subtract the product of the other diagonal one multiply by negative two is negative two. Please use your calculators, guys. All right, that's gonna give us plus two. And we also know that uh, for a singular matrix, its determinant is equal to zero. So we can actually equate that to zero and we have created an equation that we can solve. And solving that simply gives us subtract two from both sides and divide by three on both sides. Yeah, we did get a fraction, but that's okay. That's life, you know, it's just a, a, a fraction, a negative fraction to boot, but that's fine. Uh, so our value of X works out to be negative two thirds. And it will be very, very wise for you guys to um, keep practicing a lot of these examples because this comes all 100% of the time, 100% of the time it comes um, on your exam papers. So once again, if you guys want a full tutorial on these types of questions, um, just leave your comments below and um, I will uh, 
most likely do one if I see a significant number of students requesting them. OK, guys, it was good to be with you and I hope to see you guys in my next video. Bye.